yesterday was the premiere of season 21 of Dr. Phil. To commemorate, we're talking with someone who has seen more episodes of Dr. Phil than anybody we know. Who could that be? Dr. Phil himself. Okay. All right, Dr. <laughs> Phil joining us right now. Hey, Dr. Phil! Hey, Dr. Phil! Good morning. How are you two? Doing good. Before we get to the business at hand, my friend, <clears throat> our mutual broadcasting friend Jerry O'Connell was on the show yesterday from The Talk, and he was really excited about you coming on The Talk this week, and he did a Dr. Phil impression. So I want you to grade his Dr. Phil impression. Are you ready? All right, let's, let's All right. see it. <laughs> Jerry, do your Dr. Phil. <laughs> So, uh, also, uh, later this week, we are going to have Dr. Phil, who is going to uh, help me address the fact that my teenage daughters hate me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Dr. Phil? Scale of one to five. He needs to put a few more syllables in a couple of words, and then he'll be there. <laughs> fantastic, so fantastic. Nobody can Dr. Phil like Dr. Phil, which is why season 21, this is a fantastic uh, thing. What can we look forward to in this season? Well, I'm glad you asked because we are making some really exciting changes. You know, people, we really let our audience dictate what we talk about, and this year, they have really asked for some different things. They want to talk about some social issues mm. because they're concerned about what's going on in this world. They're yeah. concerned, are we safe to send our kids back to school? What are they going to be taught when they get back to school? What about all this homelessness? What about these violent attacks that are going on just randomly on the streets? How about all this inflation? What's going on in this world that seems to be spinning out of control? So I did something which was to bring my entire studio audience up on stage as an interactive focus group. Every show, they're going to be right up here with me uh, where they can interact with me. They can interact with the experts, the guests, ask questions, make comments, and be really involved in what's going on in the show. It's more real than it's ever been on Dr. Phil in 20 years. That is really interesting. Right? Yeah, I dig it, Dr. Phil. Now I want well, to be in the crowd. I do too. It's so good to hear from these people because you know what? They're out there thinking. You can hear the wheels turning, yes. but now you can hear what they're actually thinking and, and asking some really good questions. Oh, cool. Well, one of the things that um, that you guys are talking about today, and this we were just talking about this this <clears> morning, um, is that uh, hate crimes, right? Anti-Semitism is higher in the state of California than it's ever been. Uh, Asian hate across the country. It's it's awful, but that's what your your viewers are very interested in knowing about. They're really concerned about it. You know, in 2020, approximately 8,000 hate crimes were reported, but the DOJ says the number's closer to a quarter of a million oh, every wow. year, but they're not getting reported because the people feel like nobody cares. The police don't do anything about it. So in the Asian American community, they just all say, hey, there's no point in it. Just you have to just watch out for yourself. We have a wonderful family on. It was attacked just in a drive through uh, here in, in Hollywood, getting wow. some food at a fast food restaurant. Police didn't really do anything about it, didn't arrest the guy. They were rolling on the ground, being attacked out of their cars. That's insane. Uh, then the anti-Semitic attack in New York City. Four guys beat a guy up that wound up having to have surgery in the hospital. And it was so interesting to hear the interaction with the audience and just watch those walls melt away when they got to know these people mm -hmm. and realize, oh my God, these are the nicest, most charming people. Uh, and we just need to get to know them. Yeah. And when you see that, it just all goes away. Now, Dr. Phil, let's go back 21 years when you first started the show. That Dr. Phil, would he have believed that you would still be going strong at 21 years later? You know, I never even gave it a thought. So certainly not. Things have changed so much. Yeah. I mean, think about it. 21 years ago, the first tweet hadn't been sent. There were no social media platforms. Yeah, so Texts weren't a thing. Yeah. Uh, there was no social media where things could go viral overnight. People could get hated on, shamed, bullied, canceled. All of those, none of that was part of our reality. And today it's a driver. It's true. Yeah. That's very true. You're right. True. It's so different. All right. Well, we're looking forward to working it all out with Dr. Phil. Uh, <laughs> excited to see, uh, again, season 21 started yesterday, and we're just going to keep the party going. Well, listen, I'll be here every day, and you too, I'll make a week long program anytime. 
I Perfect. love it. Perfect. Perfect. Let's it. do it. And then uh, I can't wait to celebrate Dr. Phil's 41st birthday, you know, on the show when you get to 41 years. We'll just keep this going, yeah. brother. Well, if you'll be there, I'll be here. <laughs> Sounds good. It's good a date. It's, it's a, a date. date. Thanks, Dr. Thanks, Phil. Thanks, Dr. Phil.